very much. We have thank you for joining the call. We have uh, 14 devotees online. Uh, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shila Prabhupada. Uh, today, Guru Maharaj will continue to enlighten us on the series of um, um, uh, verses from Canto 10, uh, Chapter 9, um, Mother Yashoda binds Lord Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Bring the verse down to the Sanskrit. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 10, Chapter 9, Mother Yasoda binds Lord Krishna. This is verse number 3. Shamam Visabhut. Shomam Basat Putra Kata Tata Birat Sutanadyam Putra Sanad Sruta Kucha Yugam Jata Kampacha Subruhu Raja Karsas Marabujam Chala Kankano Kundalam Cha Swindam Bakram Kabara Gundalam Malati Near Mamanta Translation, dressed in a saffron yellow sari with belt tied around her full hips. Please stop moving the cursor around the page. Don't do that. Dressed in a saffron yellow sari with belt tied around her full hips, Mother Yasola pulled on the churning rope laboring considerably, her bangles and earring moving and vibrating and her whole body shaking. Because of her intense love for her child, her breasts were wet with milk. Her face with her very beautiful eyebrows was wet with perspiration and malati flowers falling from her hair. Srila Prabhupada's purpur. <clears throat> Anyone who desires to be Krishna conscious in motherly affection or parental affection should contemplate the bodily features of Mother Yasoda. It is not that one should desire to become like Mother Yasoda, for this is Mayavad. Either in parental affection or in conjugal love, friendship or servitude, in any way we must follow in the footsteps of the inhabitants of the Dava and not try to become like them. Therefore, this description is provided here. Advanced devotees must cherish this description, always thinking of Mother Yasoda's features, how she was dressed, how she was working and perspiring, how beautiful the flowers were arranged in her hair, and so on. Once you take advantage of the full description provided here by thinking of Mother Yasoda in maternal affection, Krishna. Om Gyanti Midandasya Gina Jana Salakaya Chaksu Om Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurveda Maha Shri Chaitanya Manobis Tam Stapti Tam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadanti Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pucharine. Nir Vishesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine. Vanchakalpa Turu Vischa Kripa Sindhu Vevacha. Titanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namahona Maha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Vedadara Sivasadi Gaur Bhaktivinda 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. So we continue with this narration from the ninth chapter of the tenth canto, describing Krishna's binding Mother Yasoda, which is the fundamental pastime that we focus on in this particular month, Krishna stealing butter, his mother chasing after him and binding him up. Mm. There are so many beautiful angles of description based on this particular pastime. And here we find another one. Uh, Krishna consciousness means to absorb yourself in Krishna or to absorb yourself in the activities of Krishna and Krishna's pure devotees. Here we have Mother Yasoda. She is a cent percent pure devotee. She knows only that Krishna is her son. She's completely absorbed in that mood of serving him as the perfect mother in all aspects of her service to him and like a ordinary mother she worries when her child when she feels her child is not getting what he should get or is doing things that he should not be doing this is her motherly love out of all of the personalities in Vatsayaras we have, there are many, the gopis of Vrindavan, the different gopis such as Rohini, and many of the wives of some of the prominent cowherd men, along with the men who are also Vatsayaras. And then we have, this is the Vrindavan mood, of course Vatsayaras carries over to other leelas too. You have that in Ram Leela of Koshaya's love and care for her son, Sri Ram. Here in Vrindavan Leela, Mother Yasoda is the best of the best. And here we get a little instruction how we can take advantage for our own spiritual development by following a certain protocol to help us become more absorbed in the pastimes. She's dressed in a, a saffron yellow sari, not just yellow sari or saffron sari, but saffron yellow. Srimad Bhagavatam gives it in the most detailed way. A belt is tied around her hips, but her hips are full, not just hips, but full hips. Mother Yasoda, is, is uh, she's pulling on the churning rope, laboring considerably, not just constantly, but considerably also with great effort. In other words, the labor is being made. Then we get to see what's actually happened. Her bangles, earrings are moving and her whole body is shaking because of such intense love for her child, milk is flowing from her breast. This is, an, this is a feature of intense love for the child. This can even happen with mothers in the world today, that they have so much love for their child automatically. When the child is at the nursing age, when the breasts are filled with milk by the arrangement of the Supreme Lord, then uh, that milk comes out. <laughs> the child is not even there to accept it, but it comes out. So you can understand that breast milk is a feature of love, mother's love for the child. It's an expression of her love. It's a feature of her love. And then it goes on to describe her face, eyebrows that are beautiful, 
And not only they're beautiful, but they're wet with perspiration. And there's flowers in their hair, malati flowers. And what is happening? While well, she's churning and laboring considerably, and all these things are happening, the flowers are falling from the hair. So this is the perfection of loving mood personified in a descriptive way of Mother Yasoda's love for Krishna. So as devotees, and of that, those who are actually serious in devotional service, who want to go deeper into the mood of bhakti, and for especially for those who may be inclined to that mood of parental affection, this description is the epitome of meditation. It's the epitome of meditation. It shows all of the features of Mother Yasoda's love and how it's being expressed. And not only expressed, but expressed in a certain way because she's making milk or she's making butter for Krishna. <laughs> so this, uh, as Prabhupada says, it says here, we should take note of this descriptions. Advanced devotees must cherish this description. How she's dressed, how she's working, perspiring the flowers and so on. This is Krishna consciousness. Now Prabhupada also cautions in the early part of the purport that one may have similar feelings of affection for their own child and one, but one should not think that they are like they are like Mother Yasoda. <laughs> Mother Yasoda is unique. We can only somehow give a little indication of her bhakti in the expressions of that are being described here. But we can never fully understand, nor even begin to fully understand, uh, how deep that love goes. <laughs> Uh, there is a class of spiritualists who like to take the features of personalism, such as described here, and consider themselves to be on the same level or have the ability to attain that same level. Mayavad simply means uh, that understanding that is featured around the illusionary external energy of the Lord of Maya. In other words, it's not possible. Therefore, we call them Mayavadis or those who are serving the external energy of the Lord and not the Lord himself. So, and Prabhupada goes on to describe how this mood should simply be dispensed with not only in parental affection, but in all conjugal love and friendship and servitude. One may somehow mistakenly or illusionary, that's illusionary, think that I also am like the great souls who have love for Krishna placing themselves in a similar position within their mind. They may even try to demonstrate that in life. When Srila Prabhupada was here in the year 1970, which was not too many years after he had begun the Krishna conscious movement, many, many devotees, and I use the word many, more than 50, at the time, were actually had come together to form a club based on exhibiting the features of the eternal associates of Krishna in the mood of conjugal love, the Madhurya Ras, the mood of the gopis, or the mood of conjugal love of the gopis. Yeah. And it became quite 
a fiasco, a farce, and Srila Prabhupada didn't really, wasn't completely aware of it when it began, and even when it continued on for some time, but when he did, he immediately uh, called his senior devotees and said, stop it <laughs> immediately. And they did, and that so-called group was broken up. So there is this feature of the conditioned soul. They want to be like the eternal residence of Vrindavan without having those qualifications. One can, as it's, one can aspire for and meditate upon the mood of devotion of the great souls in any of the four rasas as mentioned here, parental affection, conjugal love, friendship, and servitude. And that is recommended. And by practicing devotional service, seriously and then regularly, perfecting their, the quality of their service in all areas, and at the same time, absorbing themselves and hearing the pastimes of a particular resident of the spiritual world and glorifying that personality and the service they have and the mood of that service, one can make advancement in that same direction. And that when it becomes what we say, when it begins, it is called spontaneous devotional service, following in the footsteps of a great personality. But there is two things, Anusharan and Anuskaran. Anus Quran means to imitate. Imitation is cheap. <laughs> people like to imitate, even in the material world, they like to imitate people who are very popular. Uh, <laughs> there are people who like to, you know, imitate politicians, movie stars, sports fi fig figures. And sometimes they become so absorbed in doing that, they actually take on some of these characteristics externally and imitate them in their life. <laughs> sometimes we even see that people like to do that in spiritual circles, imitate these personalities or even imitate great devotees of the Lord. But it's imitation, as we mentioned, is cheap. And it has no, it is actually quite repugnant. It's something that is meant to be discarded. Uh, one should follow in the footsteps and one has to learn that science here. So here in learning the science of following the footsteps in this particular verse, <laughs> you get an indication of how to do that. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about <coughs> Mother Nisoda in a way that it's described in this particular verse. And we can practice that and think, and then think how can we serve Mother Yasoda in the mood of serving the Lord in the same way. And so it's all based on uh, absorbing oneself in great souls and uh, getting their mercy and developing the qualities of these great personalities, which are available because these qualities sit within the heart or in the soul of each and every living entity accordingly. Accordingly means according to the mood of your own devotional service, like that. So it's nice. You can simply read this translation over and over again and absorb yourself in what is being described here. And you can also come to a picture meditation within your own mind of what is being described here in a very direct way. And that is meditating on the great personality, Mother Yasoda, and her service to Krishna. That is bhakti, and that is a very 
sweet level of bhakti where one actually enter, begins, slowly begins to into, into the mood of Mother Yasoda. So these are some of the things we can think about in this particular. Uh, and devotees should aspire for following in the footsteps of great souls, whether it's Mother Yasoda, Nanda Maharaj, one of the gopis of Vrindavan, one of the cowherd boys of Vrindavan, like that, or one of the more uh, foremost servants of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan Dham. This is Krishna consciousness. Uh, this is very sweet. And then as, this, as the description goes on, we go deeper and deeper and deeper. I was uh, questioned a while back based on the idea that these descriptions of Mother Yasoda's Bhati, why are they there in Bhagavatam? You'll find describing her breasts filled with milk, her uh, large hips like that. It sounds very sensual, but that's for people who are uh, very prone to sensual thoughts. Rather than seeing it, they see it in a very sensual way. Or they don't understand it and they describe it in a material way. Or if they're not qualified due to their, what we say, consciousness is on a low level, then better they refrain from developing or adopting this mood of devotion. Because their minds are not, their minds are too disturbed by material things. So, uh, yeah, so I had to deal with and respond to people who took issue with the Bhagavatam for becoming, describing in detail the body of Mother Yasoda. <laughs> But it's meant to enhance devotion and attraction, not sensuality. Okay, so these are some features. So one should uh, carefully read these verses and um, try and read also about Krishna's pastimes in Vrindavan, especially this particular one in relationship to the activities of Mother Yasoda. Um, and you'll go, it goes on because this particular pastime, although it's centered, although, although the, the focus is Krishna stealing butter, really the real focus is Mother Yasoda. What is her bhakti? What is that? What is that bhakti that is so attractive that the supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna Himself, who is mm, the personification of everything in existence and the controller of everything also in existence, how he becomes subordinate to the love of his pure devotee, and in this case, Mother Yasoda. And that can never be understood by reasoning and logic. It can only be understood when one is absorbed in devotional service in the mood of Vatsaya Ras you'll get a little indication of what it's like. <clears throat> but Krishna, as he is a person who is swara, swara means completely independent. Now, if you read the first verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Brahma Ida Adi Kabaye, and it goes on to the very last line, Satyam Param Jimahi, swara, is one of the words in the very last part. Swara means uh, <clears throat> means a hmm. swara means that person 
who is Nityo Nityanam Chaitanas Chaitanam Eko Bahuna Virudati Kama. That's the description of Swara. That means he controls everyone, no one controls him. He is the best and everyone is subordinate. He is the greatest and everyone is lower. Ekala Aisha Krishna Asa Brita, another verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita. So that all powerful supreme personality of Godhead is controlled by the love of this gopi. <laughs> In this case, his mother. So that is the most amazing and undescribable feature that it says if you can understand that, then you are taktwa deham porna janmani naiti mameti sojunam. You're back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> There's no question. You made it. <laughs> If you can understand completely how Krishna is controlled by the love of his devotees, not just theoretically, but completely, then you have reached pure Krishna consciousness. Okay, so I'll stop there and uh, we'll open it up for discussion, questions. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the very nice class. Like, uh, so nice class today. Like, Krishna conscious means to absorb yourself um, in Krishna and how we devotees should aspire to follow the mood of these great souls. And thank you so nicely explaining this verse. Like, Mother Yashoda, she is a perfect example how she is completely absorbed in serving Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. Uh, uh, dear devotees, uh, please uh, unmute yourself if you have any questions, um, comments, or realizations. Uh, uh, please go ahead. Um, you can unmute or you can type in the chat box or you can raise your hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare See any questions? Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna, uh, dear devotees, if you have any comments. Uh, yeah, yes, Deepti Mataji, please go ahead. Sorry. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shila Prabhupada, all glory to you, Guru Maharaj. Thank Prabhupada. you so much. Hare Prabhupada. Krishna, Jaiho. Hare Krishna. Sorry, I, I forgot to change my name, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> because of the work, I have to keep my material name on the Zoom. So. It's also a very nice name. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, I have a, just one question regarding Devki Mata. So uh, every time we hear about Yashoda Mata and Krishna's love, what about, what about Devki Mata? Why is it not like described so much? Because Krishna went after uh, killing Kans Mama yeah, too. That is described. Is it? Oh. Krishna's Lila Purushottam. Okay. Lila Purushottam means that he performs his activities in the mood of Lila in Vrindavan. So that centered around Mother Yasoda. So Hini's connection with Krishna was just in the jail cell. When, she, when he appeared to her in her Aishwarya Bhav in his four-handed form dressed in the Vishnu manifestation of himself. <clears throat> so um, there's not much to that, except what's described in the very beginning of the Bhagavatam, when Krishna appeared to her 
And then there is some details of her, how she reacted to that. But um, so there's a lot, um, there's a quite a difference, both in activity and in mood between the two. Activity is that there was very less chance that Devaki and Vasudev, and that came out later, when Krishna saw Devaki and Vasudev at Kurukshetra, he apologized them, he said, you are actually my mother and father, but I never gave you any time. So he was actually feeling so remorseful and apologetic that, you know, you raised me from when I was first born, but I never was had a chance to become your son. And uh, you'll read that in the Srimad Bhagavatam in one of the chapters after Krishna, this was in Mathura, actually. When Krishna mm -hmm. was in Mathura, he speaks to them. He, he, he comes back to Mathura after he kills Kamsa. Mm -hmm. After he kills Kamsa, he meets with King Ugrasena and, and many of the other residents. But he spends some quality time with Vasudeva and Devaki, and he's very apologetic. You can see that. Um, I asked, uh, I asked uh, one of our regular members on this conference to read that particular chapter, especially the first 10 verses in that chapter. Um, and I don't know if he did it or not. I won't mention his name. But um, yeah, there is a particular chapter. I forgot the no number of the chapter, but it's right after Kamsa is killed by Krishna, where you can see how uh, heartfelt Krishna is in explaining to his parents, Devaki and Rohini. Uh, I mean, not Rohini, but uh, Devaki and uh, Vasudev, De Vasudev and Devaki, how he didn't give them any chance to serve, nor did he get a chance to serve them as his child. Now he's grown up, he's speaking about that. So that's it. So yeah, there wasn't much as described in the Bhagavatam between uh, Devaki and Krishna. Only that she was there and he appeared from her womb and in the jail cell. And after some exchange, some mood of loving talks, and then Vasudev takes Krishna and brings him to Vrindavan. Therefore, he's Leela Purushottam because he, he finds pleasure in his Leelas. To take birth in the, in the, in the, jail cell of Kamsa is not really one of his leelas. <laughs> it is in one sense, it is a leela. He can't say it's not a leela. But his real leelas were in Erin Vrindavan. <laughs> and there's where Mother Yasoda was there. And mm. the, the perfect role at his The Devki must be feeling so, so um, sad and like, you know, without Krishna, she, her heart condition must be very bad as yeah. well. They suffered that. I mean, mm. Krishna understood how much they suffered. So there was two exchanges, one at Kudushetra that came later, and the initial one at Mathura. Both were in the mood of apologizing. <laughs> so much of loss from the Mother Devki, isn't it? Sacrification. Yeah, it's unfortunate. She was put in that situation, but still at the same time, she is a very exalted personality who was an, who was an eternal associate of the Lord. And she got the role of Krishna's mother. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji. Uh, Sridevi Mataji has a question, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Mataji, can you please go ahead? Thank you, Sudha. Hare Krishna, your Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I was thinking as you were describing this pastime of Mother Yashoda with the little baby Krishna, 
how we encourage to think about how much devotion and how much love she has for Krishna. And I was thinking as mothers, especially when our children are small and we are raising them, all our thoughts are just centered around the child. Is he fed? Is he, does he need a diaper change? Then after that schooling, then after that growing up and homework. I mean, a mother's whole life is practically centered around the child's well-being. And uh, if you're trying to be Krishna conscious at the same time, is there a conflict? No, that's your, that's your, that's your service. Okay. Yeah, that was, that was explained by Srila Prabhupada that the children that come in our movement are very special and they should give, be given full attention and care so they can grow up to be, you know, fully Krishna conscious. They have been in their last lives. They have uh, performed devotional service. Now they've come into this devotional family. It's our duty to give them everything we can, both on the motherly level for personal needs and affection, and especially on the spiritual level. Mm -hmm. Mm. Prabhupada pointed that out to one particular god sister of mine who was asked the same question mm -hmm. where should she place her time and energy in her service in the temple or in her child mm. and Prabhupada yeah. immediately responded in the child mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah I remember it's a very famous letter for you child worship is deity worship Srila Prabhupada made it very clear. He said child worship is more important than deity worship. He didn't say it was deity worship. <laughs> no, no. He said for you, child worship is deity worship, I think. Mm, uh, let's see. Uh, I know where the quote is on the calendars when they put out these daily quotes of Srila Prabhupada. But I don't know if where I, can, I, can... I can try to I can try to pull it up online by Googling it. Yeah, actually, actually, it doesn't really matter because it makes the same point. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, the second thing I wanted to say, Guru Maharaj, is this pastime where, um, or rather, where Sukhavaha was, you know, feeling a little sad for Mother Devaki, and the Lord says that to his mother. And in my next Leela, you will become my mother and you will enjoy all my childhood pastimes when he comes as Balaji. And that time, his mother is Devaki and she enjoys all the childhood pastimes, raising him um, and bringing him up like that. That's what I, I, I remember hearing about Lord Balaji. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah, I can research it for authenticity. But, of course, we, uh, we, we would like to get a reference with that in order to authenticate it. Right, right. Yeah. That's, a, that's, a, that's an important point. Yes, Guru Maharaj. I will look it up to see if I can find an authentic source for that. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mataji, for the very nice question. Even I had that lingering in my mind, like uh, when it comes to taking care of kids, you know, which is like more important. So, Gurmaj, like in regards to that, I have a question. Like, um, as this, uh, um, Suda, uh, you have to speak a little louder, and your voice is too, too far oh, in the okay, background. So, oh, okay, sorry, Gurmaj. Is it better? Is it better yeah. now? Yeah. Okay, so Gurmash, even I had that question always lingering in my mind when it comes to taking care of uh, kids, you know, um, and surveys, like, which is like more important. And also like, uh, um, as you mentioned, like child worship is more important. So Gurmash, if I understand like the mood, again, like uh, when we take care of the child, the attachment does not come, right? So again, it should be in the mood uh, to make them Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. What's the question again? Uh, my question, Guru Maharaj, like uh, when we are actually taking care of the kids, right? So the mode should be, again, make them Krishna consciousness, but not attachment. Mm. Um, Srimad Bhagavatam, fifth canto, fifth chapter, verse number 18. Okay, uh, okay let me share that, Guru Maharaj. One second. Excuse me. 
Fifth canto, fifth chapter, verse 18. I believe it's 18. Okay, just two minutes, Guru Maharaj, verse 18. Yeah. 5518 is the direct and complete answer to your question. Okay, Guru Maharaj, I'm sharing. Um, Uh, it's a right one, Guru Maharaj, 5.5.18. Yeah. Okay. okay. Read. Oh, okay, Guru Maharaj. Um, translation. Uh, uh, one who cannot deliver his uh, depth on the path of repeated birth and death should never become a spiritual master, a father, husband, a mother, or worshipable demigod. Should I read mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's see if we can hear. It says here. Okay. Uh, yeah. So it's clear. This is the duty of these persons who are in charge. Spiritual master is in charge of his disciples. Okay. And he has to make sure that they're getting everything they need to practice Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. And he may also make sure that they're making advancement. A father has to do that with the children, the husband, a mother, mm -hmm. teacher. Go down the page and see if, we, see if where Prabhupada directly speaks about this. He speaks it in it more or less indirectly. Yeah, he says here. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. Uh, last paragraph, Guru Maharaj. If you want me to read this? Um. Unless one, uh, it says here, unless one is devoted, one cannot give everything to the Supreme Lord. Unless one can do so, unless one can do so, he cannot become a spiritual master, husband, father, or mother. So here, let's see here. First, the father, spiritual master, or husband must be able to release the dependent from repeated birth and death. He cannot do this. He plunges himself in the ocean of unrepressible and unlawful activities. Uh, everyone should be responsible, take charge of dependents, such as a spiritual master takes charge of a disciple, a father takes charge of a son. That also includes a mother taking charge of the children. All these responsibilities cannot be discharged honestly unless one can save dependent from the person. In other words, if you're not engaged in trying to save or bring one, your, your children, to Krishna consciousness, you're not acting in the role of a parent. Mm you may be loving and doing so many things on the bodily level but what does that mean they simply take birth again and have to suffer again in another in the next birth so this is a responsibility for those in these positions so yeah you have children it's your duty and it's you and when you also encourage your children to follow you as a ben as their benefit for them. Similarly, I would also add, I'm just going to add something here for everyone, that you know, my effort to make you all Krishna consciousness is taking on different angles. So try to cooperate with that. If you follow my instructions or you follow carefully the process as given of devotional service, you'll get the benefit. And then I will be doing my duty nicely. If I'm doing my duty and you're not responding to accepting what I'm giving you, then it becomes impossible for both of us to make any tangible uh, success in our activities. So I encourage the devotees to take this movement very seriously, chant their 16 rounds every day, strictly follow the four regulative principles, 
And whenever the opportunity presents itself and even look for the opportunity, try to engage in service in different ways. This is important. So the efforts are being made, and just like you're a mother, and we have fathers out there too. You're trying your best to help your children grow. And you want them to follow because you know this is the best thing for them. That's your responsibility. But you get frustrated, you get angry sometimes, or you get unhappy, whatever, when they don't follow. <laughs> so same thing with a spiritual master. He goes through the same thing. So the same, so the responsibility is great. Responsibility is great. In, in any position where an other, others are dependent on you for their success in life, you, that is a great position. It's a great, it's a responsible position. And one, one has to be qualified to accept that. And one has to be able to know how to lead their disciples or their children. So in one sense, the mother and the father are also spiritual masters for the children. They have to take what their spiritual master gives them and apply it in the teachings and guidance that they, you know, they are using in order to uh, guide their children, to instruct their children, to uh, uplift their children. Yeah. Great responsibility. This verse illustrates that. Mm -hmm. It's not a small thing. <laughs> so take it seriously. And from the age of five years old to the age of 15, these are the ages where the child, children learn the most. This is the age where you have to become very, what's the word? A strict in giving instructions and guidance like that. After 15 years old, then you become their friend and deal with them on a more friendship level. What between five and 15, this is called the formative years, the development years, the years that they pick up everything that they will use for the rest of their life. And this is Chanika Pandit's um, clear uh, delineation of how a child is, is, is meant to be guided in the different stages of uh, development. When they're a baby between zero and four, five years old, they're very kind, sweet, loving, making sure they, didn't, they don't hurt themselves, guide them, tolerate whatever mistakes they made. As a, but once they get five years old and older, then you have to, as they say, lay down the law. <laughs> and they will appreciate that later on in life. Not so much when it's happening. <laughs> The life, row, the life raft is thrown. Now you have to catch it. Okay. Mother Suda, is that? Yes, yes. Thank sufficient? you so much. Thank you. That's a really wonderful answer. Thank you so much for your reply. Thank you. Thank you. And motherly care and affection is still there during all these instructions on the spiritual level. That is always there and should be there and must be there. And it's just natural. 
but we combine both of these uh, guidances into one, and that's that's the responsibility of a parent. Mm. And uh, after coming to this moment, we are actually realizing and learning that. Thank you so much by mm -hmm. Association of Parents. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, I think I have, uh, pretty much I have one question. Um, a question. I think Mataji commented, really, Mataji, no, you are absolutely right. Shri Devi. worship is more important than worship. Uh, Sri Devi Mataji commented, uh, Guru Maharaj, you're absolutely right. Child worship is more important than deity worship is a correct wording. Thank you very much for taking on this uh, grave responsibility to say. Yeah, thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, I don't see, uh, dear devotees, any questions? Uh, please go ahead and uh, Sri Devi Mataji raised her hand. Oh, I, I have, yes, Guru Maharaj, uh, if I may humbly ask another question. Your recent illness is actually was a very, uh, is a time for introspection for me to look inward to see, you know, where I am not doing things right. And I found myself not chanting all my Gayatris on time or sometimes even missing them. And I was seriously concerned whether that's another wow that I have taken and you know missing Gayatris or forgetting them is also as important as I mean as as detrimental as not chanting my rounds it's guru mantra the Hare Krishna mantra is available for everyone but the guru mantra is the Gayatri mantra and so that's given on Brahminical initiation. Yeah, it's extremely important. Practice, you might find it difficult to chant or sometimes inconvenient, but one should not neglect that or think it's, le think it's not important. If you want more deeper understanding, then read. Uh, there's two nice ex explanations, one by Shiva Ram Maharaj, one by His Holiness Sachinandana Maharaj. Both have given detailed explanations of the Gayatri Mantra. Very important. And how to remember the right times uh, to, to chant? What are the best times to chant uh, the three, three times a day? Well, when we say morning, noon, and evening, if you really want to get right down to it, you get the Gayatri app. It's an app called Gayatri, and it gives you, according to the location you're in, the actual Gayatri Titi. Hmm. But uh, the best thing to do is um, um, before your rounds in the morning, chant your morning Gayatri. The second time is before you take prashadam, lunch, chant your mid noonday Gayatri or middle day Gayatri. And the third one is, these are kind of a, just a general one. The, best, the third one is make, uh, the last thing before you take rest at night, chant Gayatri. Hmm. The times may be a little bit different than the actual titis, but these are ways to keep it connected to a routine. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much. My humble obeisance. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have just one question. If it's okay, can I ask? Um, yeah. Uh, so, Guru Maharaj, um, like you mentioned, like we must follow in the footsteps of inhabitants of Vrindavana and not try to become like them. Uh, could you please a little bit explain, uh, like not try to become like them, but uh, follow the footsteps of uh, inhabitants of Vrindavana? 
<laughs> I think I said, I explained the details and just go back over the tape and listen because okay. I gave I gave a, a lengthy okay. explanation of that. <laughs> okay, okay, good much. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe I have. But if, if you're not, if you really want it explained, then get Shiva Ram Maharaj's book called Spontaneous Devotional Service. Okay, good much. That's a small book, about 70, 80 pages. It gives a nice detailed explanation of spontaneous devotional service. Okay, good much. Yeah, uh, but it's there in my in this in this class. If you go back over, you'll find it in there. Yes, good much. Definitely I'll go back and listen again. Maybe I was a little bit inattentive. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So good much. Okay. I don't yeah. see any questions. So we'll stop here. Yes, okay, very much. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your association. Thank you. Thank you, dear devotees. Thank you for joining the call. Vancha Kalpa Darupesha, Kalpa Sindhu Vyocha, Patitana, Pavanipya, Vaishnavipya, Namo Namo. Our Lord is to love you, Pachesha. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Now, did you get my email, uh, Shivati? No, Guru Maharaj, I didn't get any. They sent you one this morning, about maybe just before our class started. Yes, Guru Maharaj, now I see. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah Shamil Shakim Mataji sent me to Guru Maharaj. He sent me a copy of this information. I'll share with the group. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare